This is the regression video and reporting regression results. If your manuscript will stop with a simple linear regression, we recommend that you report the following. First, a scatter plot with the regression line superimposed. This will help your re reader visualize the strength of the relationship between the predictor and the outcome, and also reassure that reader that there weren't terrible violations of the model assumptions. Second, report the regression coefficients with p-values plus either standard errors or a confidence interval. The intercept coefficient is usually of less importance than the slope coefficient. For the slope, also report a clinical interpretation about whether its value is substantively large or small, and also about whether all the points within the confidence interval lead to a similar interpretation. The model R-squared provides a quantitative assessment of model fit. There are also some additional elements that are reported less frequently. For example, confidence intervals that apply to all the x values simultaneously. These other reporting options won't be discussed here. If either x or y have been transformed, you have the choice of reporting the results on the scale in which they were analyzed or on the original scale. Reporting results on the scale in which the data were analyzed is the more natural from a statistical perspective. Some reasons include the fact that the fitting lot, fitted line will be linear on the transformed scale, the beta coefficient has a simple interpretation that doesn't hold on the original scale, that the assumption of equal variances only holds on the transformed scale. However, sometimes it's important for your reader to also have the report's results reported on the original scale. If so, there are some nuances that would benefit from a discussion with a statistician. Just as a reminder, for moderate to large samples, the confidence interval for the regression coefficient is based on its normality. For small samples, replace the point on the normal curve with the corresponding point from a t-distribution. The degrees of freedom for that t-distribution are the same as the degrees of freedom for error reported in the ANOVA table. The influential data points were identified. You'll have to deal with them somehow. Extreme leverage points can usually be deleted. For example, in a study of men that are married to young women, you should feel free to delete the 95-year-old man and tell the reader that your model only applies to younger men. Outliers are more controversial. As with the ANOVA, impossible data points can be deleted without comment. If the outliers are physically possible, they would require more careful scrutiny. For small to moderate-sized data sets, it's helpful to explicitly consider each outlier separately. In particular, such data points might provide clues about unexpected subpopulations, unusual circumstances under which an intervention might work particularly well or particularly poorly, and so forth. With large data sets, you might take a sample of the extreme outliers and do the same. What to do about the statistical analysis and data sets that contain outliers usually involves some form of sensitivity analysis the most extreme form of which is to try the analysis with all the outliers in and with all the outliers out. Another option is to use statistical techniques that are robust to the presence of outliers. Nonparametric regression is one such technique. For example, by transforming the predictors and or the outcomes into ranks and proceeding in the usual fashion. Because people tend to underestimate the amount of, of biology in normal biological systems, your natural instinct is probably to err in the direction of treating real data points as outliers. Accordingly, your default should be to include them, probably by using at least one analytical method that's robust to their presence. Your statistician knows lots of such methods. Moreover, that statistician will be very happy that you've done some initial thinking, such as looking into individual data points, considering the possible mechanisms that would generate the outliers, and so forth.